this is something which i purposely did not discuss last time because the principles is exactly that link it up with the live implementation that we'll see today so azure is the platform that we used last time to just show the deployment of a model on in production today i'll actually show you the ci cd pipeline but what how is it linked with the principles of ml ops please remember ml ops is a concept ml ops is a uh, is is basically a series of events which form together and come together and form a concept okay how we do it what platform we use can be any cloud platform we'll be showing it using azure today okay let's get to know the principles the first principle automation it will allow you to automate the entire end to end process you'll have the scripts written everything will be written from your end it could be in your local system it could be in your github repository it could be in azure repository there are so many different ways you can connect it once you connect it you don't need to rewrite or you know you don't need to start from scratch to be honest okay you have a particular problem statement given to you and that's how the entire system revolves around this concept okay how it happens when we see the implementation we'll see that uh the practices that it promotes we are already aware of ci cd uh it's a it's a very very it's, it's more of like a colloquial that's used with devops for those who don't know i'll just uh, revise the so ci and cd is like continuous integration and continuous delivery which is continuous deployment integration is the part where you do the testing and evaluation deployment is when you put it up on uh like on 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 a platform basically for the user to use okay so when i am talking about again i'll go back to the previous example if i if i am uh comparing crickbuzz with the espn app okay crickbuzz uh, has a lot of features which probably espn does not have so then espn will try to come up with some or will come will come up with those features and a couple of more features so this continuous experimentation is the ci thing that we can see over here on our screen the continuous integration part and then you change your code you add few features you remove, remove bugs once that is done you straight away put it in production once more one more time that's the continuous delivery now this is done by devops what extra do you need for machine learning you need a continuous training and continuous monitoring um i had given a nice example last time i'll do that again when we uh, move to that part of the slide as to why we need continuous monitoring or continuous training okay so i think i'll explain this better when we have that slide coming up the next part is versioning like i said whenever we have a particular uh, model which is uh, up on the cloud platform and that is being used by a particular organization to make predictions or to make certain you know uh, it's, it's it could be a regression based task it could be a, a classification based task whatever it is whenever this is being done they need to know which version of this model is working best now there are two reasons behind it let us go step by step number one i come up with a particular model say it's a, it's a, today we'll be using decision tree classifier so let let me let me uh, stick to that so decision tree classifier is what i have used and i've created a certain version of this classifier okay and that is going really well and then due to some reason which i'll explain in the next slide uh, the model starts performing really poor there is there is something that is going wrong with the model so obviously i have to change some maybe i have to change some hyper parameters maybe i'll have to replace decision tree a uh, classifier with uh, maybe a random forest classifier because i'll need an ensemble technique to carry out the you know prediction the, the classification task whatever it is the model that i have now is set to be better than the previous model and this is the second version of that particular model okay it's a newer version it's the latest version how many times have we heard this since our childhood the latest version were a mobile aaya hai what is that basically so the versioning is basically that upgradation with time this upgradation with time is something that ml ops will allow you to do now is it always important for you to have the latest version no think about it like this you have the latest version but there is a massive bug that's been detected and it's very difficult to get rid of that bug because if you want to get rid of that bug a lot of parameters need to be changed it will take at least two days for your team to get that done what do you do in such cases do you shut down your business it's like saturday sunday party holiday no you don't do that you go back to a previous version you go back to this was probably version 8 you go back to version 7 because version 7 although was having some issues with the model performance it was giving some output at least for two days you could push it in production and you could you know send in a message that this is a rough idea you could just as like few lines of scripting on the front end and you could say that this is a rough idea this is not a very is an approximate idea of the you know prediction that is being given just a matter of two days your your work will not stop 
that is how versioning is done in ml ops it helps you to keep a version or keep a track of each module that you made and any time there is a bug you don't do, not only need to go forward you can fall back as well that's like a backup for you okay obviously it's needless to say that there will be continuous testing we can conduct smoke tests we can conduct uh, you know the the endpoint has to be uh, you know it it the endpoint has to give you a proper uh, result all that will be done by ml ops so the testing happens parallelly like i said continuous evaluation uh, ci pipeline this continuous integration pipeline lets you to you know conduct tests and these tests these test results are always uh, yielded as uh, you know um, test artifacts so these are like the results of the test i'm going to be showing all of that when i do the ci pipeline implementation when i show it okay the next part is 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 probably like the most important principle of ml ops it basically helps you to monitor okay monitoring what is monitoring and why do i need model monitoring okay what is the purpose behind it what is the reason behind it why do i need to monitor for those who've done um, basic data science projects i'm sure you guys know you guys uh, take a data set you clean the data set first you observe the data set of course then you clean the data set once the data set is clean you then uh, you know get a proper data set but now it's not feature selected so you select certain features there are 12 columns you bring it down to 10 okay so there's one target variable and there are say nine uh, input variables okay so that's like feature selection and now you have a feature generated data then you split it into train and test and all that is being all that is being done when that is done you train your model on the train data and the testing is done on the testing data once that is done you see that the accuracy is 94% you are very happy with this model that's amazing this algorithm is going really well the hyper parameters are amazing 94 95% is quite kind of satisfactory okay once i put this up okay once i deploy this why do i again need to bother about the performance of the model why do i again need to bother about the performance of the model this is where the next slide comes in this is where the monitoring comes in okay why do i need to monitor i had explained this kind of in detail in the previous session i'm more than happy to do it one more time okay so this is basically a simple two dimensional graph that i have in front of you okay it's called the ml model uh, model dk monitoring okay that's happening through ml ops what is it doing exactly okay now there is a certain parameter a metric that i use to analyze the performance of my model okay it's called the f1 measure it's an f1 score it's the harmonic mean of your precision and recall and then accordingly you can uh, determine the accuracy of the model now one fine day you've been given a task okay in the month of august okay it's already august this is this is a very good example now thank god anyway so it's the month of august and you have been given a task you have been given a particular problem statement and they've said that you can't just do it in your local system on on jupiter notebook okay fine you use it once the model is trained and everything please give us all the artifacts all the all the all the results of this experiment that you conduct give us the test scores give us the model as a pkl file give us the uh, you know uh, everything like give us the give us the code of course and give us the data that you've trained it on and then we'll be putting it up uh, putting in to production in the month of august and it's it's a very diverse data set it's a very very diverse data set and it's very difficult to get very high uh, you know uh, f1 measure like the high, high accuracy for this particular model in the month of august so you got a near about 80% let's let's call this um, 78% you got a 78% accurate model and you provided it with them and they they took it and they they, they put it up on you know they put it in production they the, the front end team did a wonderful front end you know coding and they developed it and then they pushed it in production fine it's there when time proceeds when when time with gradually with time you're seeing that the performance of this model is degrading its accuracy score comes down to 70% by the end of august around september it's somewhere around 63 62% by the time october comes in it goes below 55% okay it goes below 55% 
now your company the organization you work with they have set a threshold that we will not work with any algorithm which has a uh, you know accuracy of less than 55% what do you do ml ops allows you to again work with this model okay and create a new version of this model in october okay pardon you already had the first version you did not have the first version you had the fundamental model when you put it in production you are seeing that gradually the performance is deteriorating with time and then the threshold of 55% has been hit you can't go below that so in october you work with it again and you create the v1 this was the version v let's call this v1 okay or let's let's say this was v0 this new version is v1 and this new version model straight away hits 96% in october in in august the model which could not even touch 80% has now gone to 96% that's something that's kind of a miracle how did that happen the problem that created this degradation is actually the thing which actually helped you to reach this 96% i'll tell that i'll tell you how that happened okay moving on you see that it it performed really well for first 2 3 weeks but again from the middle of october uh, around november it's it started to degrade it started to degrade around november it's somewhere between 80 like towards the late 70s again around december like it's not even hit december and it's fallen below the threshold which is 55% again you work on it and you create a new version of this model and then the same cycle repeats okay each time you train it ideally you will see that its its score is either better than the previous one or equal to it there could be cases when it's less than the previous one also but it's at least better than what it was it it is better it's definitely going to cross your threshold by a great margin okay now what is this what is this all about like what is what is exactly happening which is creating this problem here's what it is think of it like this i had given a cricket oriented example last time i'll i'll probably give another cricket oriented example so think of it like this you are a fast bowler okay you are a fast bowler and you have joined a particular cricket coaching class okay and your trainer is the the best fast bowler in the country okay you're a fast bowler you you have amazing talent but your trainer needs to nurture you and train you properly and only then your coach basically your coach is going to train you and then he's going to make you the best fast bowler okay you become one of the finest fast bowlers in the junior team then you go to your district the 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 you know the city team then the state team then you go you you keep growing you play ranji and one fine day you make it to the indian national team okay now you are out there in the real world facing the legendary batsman okay everything that your trainer your coach taught you you are using it to the fullest potential and you are getting like you are the highest wicket taker of the first series that you play in all the batsmen are not able to judge your bowling bowling at all okay now the first two games the first two series that you played in you did really well suddenly your performance drops the batsmen are identifying you the batsmen are kind of you know being able to figure out your your bowling style your your different variations with the ball they they're trying to they kind of they cracked your secret if i want to put it in layman's term okay what does your coach do your coach comes up with new strategies he says that use a slower short ball that can surprise a batsman use use the knuckle ball use use a, if you're a spinner you could say that use a carom ball there, there are different versions there are so many different types so depending on how the batsman has changed his performance or his style or his approach towards you you have been trained by your coach then when you go to play the next series you are again doing really well okay you are doing really well you've again become the highest run scorer of this particular series you you have developed a very good knuckle slower ball which is a yorker okay you are bowling the, the one of the world's finest knuckle, uh, finest slower balls which is a yorker which is going to hit uh, it's almost like a full toss but it's a slower ball suddenly the batsman starts following abd villiers and tilak garat nidhishan they are like very popular cricketers wo jo piche marne wala shot hota hai na the 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 dil scoop they bend down and they hit it behind the wicket keeper's head 
they started playing that they started using that for your knuckle ball again you need to come up with a new strategy to counter that what is happening this bowler was trained so well and he did so well in his ranji team in his school team everywhere he was like the king of all the bowlers the moment he was deployed and the moment he came into production the model is not performing well and now we are back to machine learning guys this is how the data change is actually going to change the requirements of the model now let me relate it with data think about it like this we are in a real world wherein like 3 months back okay now this this is dedicated to all the participants who are here right now i'm sure you guys will be able to resonate with me 3 months back when you would click on the youtube app on your mobile which were the recommendations which that would pop up compare it with today like after this live session just go to youtube uh, you know click on youtube and see look at the recommendations it's never going to be the same every week you are something new has come up some new topic somebody who mom used to watch a lot of cricket videos after the euros got over started watching a lot of football videos somebody who watches a lot of comedy videos has started watching sadguru videos and there are so many different types so many you know change in behavior of the people who are the, the consumer that leads to change in data this change that you are seeing is precisely or primarily due to the change in data the data is changing the previous data on which you had trained your model was like performing like 93 94% the moment you put it in production the data suddenly changed over these months and then the performance degraded again it was uh, you know trained on the new data and based on the new data it got a much better score again when it was deployed it, the performance dropped so this continuously happens this is why this is one of the reasons i'm not saying data drift is the only concept there could be model drift there could be a problem with a sensor like think of it like this like there is a there is a particular sensor which uh, you know reads the temperatures for you you look at the temperature and accordingly you make some predictions the model what if the sensor is broken or the sensor is damaged what if the transducer is broken what if the transducer is damaged there are so many like a wireless uh, you know wireless network has so many different uh, components right any one of them can uh, break down and then the entire machine learning model will suffer because of that so one of the reasons is data drift actually one of the primary reasons is data drift so data drift is nothing but change in the behavior of data because of which the model suffers if i want to put it in layman's language one more example could be covid like think of the air quality index i had given this example last time also uh based on last 19 years of data from 2000 till 2019 a particular person has made a model which predicts the air quality index of a particular city okay Uh, like say mumbai now this city is expected to be pop, uh, you know it's kind of highly populated there are a lot of vehicles so it's supposed to be very polluted okay so the machine is trained to detect this high amount of air quality the aqi value but what happened in uh, 2020 march there was a lockdown by 2020 july there were like hardly any vehicles that were out right so what happened as a result of that the pollution level got better the, the aqi the air quality index actually became better as a result of it the model which was predicting air quality index based on previous years does not even know what covid is because the machine is not rational like humans right that is why its performance might have degraded so this is one more example so the best part about ml ops is that it lets you be using these concepts you can actually understand the monitoring part okay how it is monitored fine Uh, again coming back to this last bit uh, the f1 score goes below the threshold the threshold is uh, denoted by the symbol tau and then you know sort of the moment it goes below tau you have to retrain it and then push it back into production so that is the ct and cm that we saw here if you come back to the previous slide you can see continuous training and continuous monitoring is happen is happening right because the previous model will be there like i said versioning lets you to keep the previous model but the new model is required because you need to redeploy it based on the new change in data or some problem that may have arisen in the uh, the the source that is there okay and the same is done using monitoring fine now that the principles are out of the way 